Hello everyone and welcome to another video of Life Replicon. In today's video, uh, I will be showing you how to isolate RNA from the plant tissue and how to check the quality of the RNA on the gel. So today I have tried to isolate RNA from the leaf tissue of one of the crop plant and here I will show you step by step guide to how to isolate RNA and run it on the gel without preparing the gel or uh, running the gel in the DEPC treated water. So today uh, I will be isolating the RNA by using triazole reagent. Triazole reagent is consist of the acidic phenol and guanidium thiocyanate. As you might have heard, triazole is very uh, popular uh, reagent to isolate the RNAs from the plant tissue or animal tissues. And most of the time it works for all kind of tissues. So here I will be showing with the triazole, which is having the components like guanidium thiocyanate and acidic phenol where the guanidium thiocyanate uh, denatures the protein and the acidic phenol maintains the acidic pH that helps the protonation of the nucleic acid. Now what is the theory behind RNA isolation? So let's understand what is happening in the RNA isolation. So suppose uh, in my tissue I have DNA and RNA which is, at new, uh, which is negatively charged at 7 pH. As we know, DNA is a negatively charged due to phosphate background and RNA is having both the charges due to uh, phosphate groups as well as hydrophilic nature of nitrogenous bases. When we add the acidic phenol or when we add the triazole, acidic phenol in it uh, protonates, the, protonates the DNA. That's why the charges on the DNA uh, can be neutralized by acidic phenol. That's why DNA becomes uncharged and uh, it is insoluble in aqueous space. Hence, DNA will go to interface. Now, RNA, it is having both the charges at neutral pH. When we add triazole, uh, the phosphate background or the phosphate backbone becomes uh, neutralized, but uh, the nitrogenous bases in RNA will remain the water soluble, hence they can be, uh, RNA can be soluble in water, hence RNA remains in aqueous phase. That's why we will be getting three different distinct layer when we add triazole. The first is a aqueous layer where RNA will dissolve. The second layer will be interface where DNA and the third phase is uh, the proteins uh, where they get precipitated. I hope you have understand the principle behind RNA isolation. Now we will start with the practical demonstration. If you have any doubts, please let me know in the comments. So we need triazole reagent. We also need chloroform. And we need isopropanol. I have allocated from the main stock and kept it with me. Also, we need 75% of ethanol, which I have prepared in a DEPC water. So remember, 75% uh, ethanol should be prepared in DEPC water. And last, we need DEPC water. So we need depend of tubes that I have auto cleared. We need pipettes. As well as we need tissue from which we are going to isolate RNA. So previously I have crushed the leaf samples and kept it in minus 80. Then I have removed into the liquid nitrogen and I am carrying out the RNA solution from them. You also make sure that you are not thawing the tissue outside the liquid nitrogen. So make sure whenever you are doing RNA isolation, have a liquid nitrogen with you to avoid thawing of the tissue. If the tissue has been thawed, then uh, you cannot get good quality of RNA. So here I have 100 mg of tissue in which I will add 1 ml of triazole. Triazole is a reagent which uh, contains guanidium thiocyanate and acidic phenol. Uh, which I have uh, explained earlier, yeah. the principle I have explained earlier. You just add 1 ml of uh, triazole reagent into the respective tubes and after adding triazole, if your tissue thaws, uh, don't worry. Here you close the tubes and then vertex it for 30 seconds in a vertexer or a vertex machine you can use. After vertexing, keep it at uh, 5 minutes at room temperature. Then add 200 microliter of chloroform into each tube. Make sure you are not touching the tube while adding the chloroform. 
and then uh, close the tubes and uh, do not vertex at this stage just inverse the tubes and keep it at room temperature for at least 10 to 15 minutes now centrifuge at 10,000 rpm for 10 minutes at 4 degrees celsius then you will get three different layers so after centrifugation we will get three different layers the upper layer is aqueous layer the middle is interface and the third one is the organic phase in a, a upper aqueous phase the rna will be there as it dissolves in water after phase separation transfer the upper aqueous layer into the fresh tube and make sure that you are not mixing the layers together so this is how it looks after taking aqueous the upper aqueous phase that we have collected into the fresh tube into that tube add 500 microliter of isopropanol isopropanol helps in the precipitation of the RNA so after adding isopropanol you just make sure you are not vertexing you just mix it uh, like what I am showing here to peel it down RNA centrifuge at 10,000 rpm for 10 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius then observe for the pellet if pellet is not there then don't worry discard the supernatant and uh, whatever the pellet if you are seeing it's okay otherwise you add 1 ml of 75% uh, ethanol that we have prepared in a DEPC water so make sure you have prepared in a DEPC water then after adding ethanol just dissolve the pellet in into the 75% ethanol then centrifuge at 5000 rpm for 4 minutes and you observe for the pellet after centrifugation and make sure you discard all the supernatant and make sure there is an, not even single drop of ethanol present inside the tube uh, you can air dry for <coughs> 10 to 15 minutes here you can see uh, the white colored pellet which is small pellet and then air dry for 15 minutes after 15 minutes you add DEPC water make sure you use only DEPC treated water and not the distilled water or milky water that will degrade the RNA add 40 to 50 microliter of DEPC water then tap mix and just keep it on ice until next use to check the quality of RNA that we have isolated prepare 1.5% of the gel here I have used the fresh milky water to prepare the buffer and in which I will prepare the gel you can use the DPC water if you want but uh, milky, fresh milky will work out then melt the gel as I have explained in previous my previous agro gel electrophoresis video then pour it after cooling it down here we are not using a TPR, we are using the gel rate uh, which is a safe stain. <coughs> Make sure your tank is clean, electrophoresis tank is clean and prepare the fresh buffer in a fresh milky water or DEPC water as your wish and then keep the caster uh, into the tank and then remove the comb and load your samples now it's time to load our rna samples here i have prepared gel loading die and i'm mixing my rna samples in the gel loading die and then loading into the wells here i have for the control purpose i am using one kb uh, dna ladder so why dna ladder because it will tell us whether uh, we have genomic DNA contamination or not in our RNA samples. If there is a genomic DNA contamination, then we can remove that uh, genomic DNA contamination by giving the DNA treatment. Now, most important, since I have prepared this gel uh, and buffer into the milky water, we need to run it fast as soon as RNA gets degraded. That's why we have kept it on 120 volts for 15 minutes and after 15 minutes we can observe the gel directly now it's time to check our rna whether it has good quality of rna or not here as you can see there are three distinct bands suggesting good quality of rna that includes 28s rrna 18s and 5s rrna respectively and also uh, i could not see any genomic dna contamination okay after isolating rna and checking the quality of the rna you can store the rna at minus 20 
degree Celsius if you are using in the week or less than a week to prepare cDNA and do further things. If you would, if you don't have any plans uh, to prepare cDNA and proceed for the real time analysis or any other experiment, you can store the RNA simply at minus 80 for longer duration. Okay, I hope the RN isolation and gel running part is very clear to you. If you have any questions regarding RN isolation or any other techniques that I have explained in my previous videos, you can uh, ask me in the comment section below. And I request you all, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. I have seen many people are watching my videos but not subscribing. It is really discouraging for me. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel if you it is if it is helpful for you. Thank you.